Greetings and salutations, Jen here, with Samson and Little Girl. I'll turn the comments on momentarily. I don't know if anybody will show up. The algorithm's being weird again. So we'll see. Come here, Little Girl. Get away from her. Sit down here. Sit. Sorry. <laughs> We're trying to get situated. All right. Um, so I know that the title of the video has things in one order, but I'm going to go backwards. The reverse of that, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty appropriate or symbolic considering the times we're in. But I got to get my head in the right space for the meat of the video. And this will get me in the right place. And I know people are probably asking questions about the thumbnail. Hold please, Sammy is getting his obligatory libation after his peanut butter treat his bribe that i give him pay him off to be quiet sam boy your table manners samson i apologize all right let me turn the comments on in case anyone does show up i i can see that they're working samson Sammy. Psst. I guess he doesn't stop until he's done, which I guess makes sense, but... All right, lay down, please. Lay down. You're being naughty. So we're going to talk about the Trojan horse first. And... I don't think I've ever actually shown you what it is, but I'm going to give you a peek for those of you who don't know when I speak of that. Those of you who think that maybe it's just um, some type of sensual item that you buy at the drugstore. Uh, it's not. Lay down. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a Trojan horse. This is a basic picture. And what it is is... Um, during the Trojan War, they were losing, and they had, like, I guess what in football you'd call a Hail Mary today. Uh, you give it one last shot, right? One last big oomph push. And what they did was they, um, there's another angle. That one's interesting. I think I don't know exactly where that's at, but it's cool. And I'm gonna jump now. So here you see all the people standing around and about. What they did was they built a horse, right? And they said that they were giving up, and they gave this giant horse to the opposing army, and they put their best warriors inside of it. And they gave everyone a weapon and said, Here, get in. They got as many people as they could. They squished themselves up and they got physically into this alleged quote unquote gift to the other army. Um, it was their supposed to be their surrender or whatever. And as the other te other guys celebrated all night, they sat in the horse. If you've never seen the movie with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Um, check it out. Hollywood used to put out some pretty epic productions. Uh, and I have a whole nother idea about what those are now in this time, seeing things the way I have and knowing what I know about that industry um, from my mother owning video stores to knowing people in the industry. I'm just putting some things together and uh, it makes for quite nefarious, nasty thing. But anyways, back to the current Topic at hand, I digress. Quit licking my pants. You're welcome for the peanut butter. Now behave, you two. I'm sorry. So they all got inside and they waited. And they knew that they would be celebrating and drinking a lot of ale and getting spirited, right, with the spirits. And so that night, while they were doing that, they all jumped out of this Trojan horse. And they, um went to war <laughs> against uh, an already, you know, what is that phrase? Um, a false sense of security. And that's what I wanted to talk about today was a false sense of security. 
when we are given signs, and no, we're not supposed to dwell on them, okay? Again, there's this branch of fundamentalist, fundamentalist Christian Christianity that is just taking over that paradigm of YouTube, and it's unfortunate that think that God is not still working, He's not still in the world, and um, that we're not supposed to be paying attention to omens and signs and wonders. No, not if they're of the enemy, but you can't fake an eclipse. You can't fake certain things, and they want you to think they can. They want you to think that there's all kind of things they can do. Um, but again, a lot of this is cover-up. Think of the term cover, you know, a cover for our sins. That's what Christ is. A lot of this is cover-up for... Um, the times that we are in, and it's damage control, and I mean spiritually and secularly, uh, in the world and not in the world. So what am I leading to with this? Well, real quick, I want to look at something. I told you this back in 2018. Um, areas that I had been warned about uh, in one way or another about that um, we shouldn't go to, and that traveling shouldn't be done unless you're with someone you really trust or unless you are self-sufficient uh, on your own. Um, otherwise, stay, stay, don't go chasing waterfalls, right? Stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. Don't go running, chasing other things. And I said that I had read this book series about um, if America were ever one day to be surprised or taken off guard, how would that be done? Sit down, you two, or I'm going to separate you. So we're going to look at some headlines real quick. Um, and again, I think we're all cut off from real news that is from other areas. So I'm going to only show you, like, I can only show you what I've been aware of. But so this is the newest one. Semi-truck driver... Uh, gets trailer stuck under North Columbus Bridge overpass. Okay, there's one. Now again, on their own, it's not a big deal, but trains don't run here anymore. And my side, of, my neck of the woods, we get our oil is pretty locally sourced. Like if certain things go down, we will be okay, and that's why it's a good spot for certain things. Um, but there are pros and cons to every area. But I just want to show you how prevalent this is and what's going on here. There's another one. Truckers know like where they can and cannot go. Okay, so for this to be, so this was four hours ago. This was just recent in Columbus. This is Minnesota, about a month ago. January, twice. In New Haven. Second day in a row, it says. Lay down. There's another one. Where's this one at? I don't know where Pierre's train bridge is. And Sioux Avenue. Oh, Minnesota. Cincinnati. Semi truck has been removed after being stuck under a bridge at Delta Avenue. Okay, February. This is regular. Like, this is every month. Okay? Again, truckers on regular, normal routes know where they can and cannot go at a certain point. There are signs above each of the, if you could see it there. There are signs. I come from Pittsburgh, so I used to like travel through tunnels all the time weekly right all the time and in 2008 the stimulus that obama gave us was supposed to go to infrastructure reinforcement that never happened it never occurred i never saw it happen did you see it happen i don't remember that and i as you'll see here i don't forget a whole lot of things like this um so what would be the next one um Um, um, bridge collapse. 
So let's see how prevalent this is. Where is this going? Portion of New Jersey Turnpike still closed after a wall collapse. That's yesterday. So in my area, in the East Coast here, we have Jersey. We have Columbus. I also told you before any of this stuff started back in 2018, since I've been doing both channels, um, that Hollywood was moving to the East Coast and that it was either going to be near me in Ohio um, or it was going to be in Pittsburgh, my hometown. Like, I saw all this stuff rolling out. You could just tell what's going on here. Okay, so we got a lot of bridge closed as bridges closed as well. And that Baltimore uh, port is still closed. Two weeks ago, closed U.S. bridges highlight neglect as repairs await funding. What we know about Baltimore's Francis Scott Key. Now, again, that's that's key. Francis Scott Key. All of these th um, statues being taken down, it's symbolic. They are bringing America down from within through a Trojan horse. And I knew this as well, seeing the traitorous, nefarious behavior of those I loved and those from the town I live in. Um, three days ago, Pittsburgh bridges close after 26 barges break loose. Now, this is big because um, there are three rivers in Pittsburgh, right? You have the Monongahela, the Allegheny, and those two form to make the Ohio. And then you have like the Yakagany River. There's other rivers, but those three are the main ones. And they are also used to bring uh, goods to our local East Coast cities. Um, that's why you'll see certain trends start either in L.A. or Pittsburgh. And they go around like either the East Coast or the West Coast from those general areas. Um, EOB Mills. Oh, that's nice. That's that's my family's name. Well, Peggy's Harbor on the Ohio River. That's funny. That's my grandma's name. This is all so bizarre to me. Okay, so we have that there. Um, and what were the other ones that we were going to look for? Bridge collapse. Highway shutdown. I don't know. Let's just punch the word semi in here and see what we find. Let's throw stuff at the wall. Motorcycle crash in Dayton. Um, so something is closed there. I-880 in Hayward reopens after an overturned big rig semi-crash in Oregon. Now, I know we have a lot of rigs traveling. I understand this as well. But again, there's a lot happening on the East Coast right now for sure. And hold, please. And let me look for a tunnel real quick. Because the tunnels in and out of Pittsburgh are also... Like, if you can't get through the tunnels, you can't get into the city. Or through the rest of the state, I guess, either, if, it's, if you're coming from one part of the city. Um, so that one's been closed. There are a lot of them. There are so many bridges there, I can't even begin to... Okay, and the next thing... Because whatever's going on... Again, the infrastructure... Something in Edgewood, February 9th this year. December, sinkhole in Pittsburgh, 2023. There we go. And there was a bridge that went, or a bridge, a bus that went through one not too long ago. This is all over Pittsburgh. It's like another, it's built on top of another city or something. I don't know. My Graham's Road was bricks and cobblestones, if you can believe that. One part of her. Now let's just check basic news. Sinkhole closes I-70, Denver. Reopens, which is cool. 
So you see how many different things can go wrong. Let's check Turnpike. So there are some in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, which it says it's construction. But again, suddenly we seem to have a whole lot of truckers who are really negligent uh, when it comes to safety. And that's pretty funny considering everybody's motto these days is be safe, stay strong. So I wanted to go over that real quick and show you. Those few things that I think it would be beneficial to keep an eye on. Now, another thing that I was looking at personally in my own research. Now, in case you haven't figured it out yet, research is my escapism. That's kind of what I do. Um, it's like other people do video games and, and I just look into things that don't make sense to me. And America's history doesn't make sense on that um Trojan horse note, I was thinking about how the Statue of Liberty was a gift from the French, um, allegedly, and we have French people up to the north of us in Quebec and down south in Louisiana. Um, so it's just funny that, uh, that you have that story of old and then we get a gift from France and it is the Statue of Liberty. They were Libertanians. They um, stormed the Bastille, right? And then, lo and behold, all these years later, we have all these strange going on, goings on and some type of Game of Thrones happening. And the least shall be first. And you're seeing that happen as well. People who were on the bottom of the totem pole are now being moved to the top. Um, in some cases, this, this might be a good thing. In other cases, it won't be a good thing. Uh, because, again, they're calling... Uh, evil good and and we shouldn't do that we shouldn't get caught up in that so I was looking at locusts and this is so wild this will explain the thumbnail that I have and you'll see how I got there in a second I don't want to spoil the process but I was thinking of the cicadas that how do you even say it is it and I'm really good like with words that's my thing but I've never heard like people don't talk about people usually say like um Locusts, right, was what I had always heard. Ooh, that's what they sound like. Okay, stop. How do I stop it? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was going to give me the pronunciation. Okay, so we have this happening. And this is another once-in-a-lifetime thing that is occurring here in America uh, at our current wherever we are in this current time um and they're nasty buggers right and i was thinking about how the bible talks about locusts and you know me i'm gonna go to the word first and again this got very strange so just bear with me for a second um we'll go to the top and if you look at locusts what let me go there if you look at locusts it says it's a noun grasshopper large large orthoteris insect noted for mass migrations accompanied by destructive ravages of vegetation um early fourth 14th century borrowed earlier in old french from languste uh circa 1200 from latin locusta locust or lobster which is really weird and again we have this reflection happening um because I've been talking about how I think that these fallen ones who are trapped here, the alleged aliens, would be in the sea. And we talked about, like, the marine kingdom and um, the, I guess you'd call them mermaids, the mermaid kingdom. That's not their original name, right? But um, And then you have the superheroes reflecting that, right? Um, it's no longer just low-key, but we have Aquaman and... All that happening. So again, we have this manifestation of some type of spiritual activity that's taking place. So I, it was my um, vision or my awareness or current insight that the pit is, is underwater until I can prove differently. And I know Christ said that he would build this church on this stone. It, it doesn't have to do with like the desert or the wilderness because 
he he rejected Satan in the wilderness, and then other people go out into the to the desert, and they that's where they encounter Satan. <coughs> Excuse me. And the point is, is he likes to get at you while you're alone, and you have to be able to have a strong sense of will to um, defend that. Man, my ear won't quit ringing. This is ridiculous. I've been having this tat tinnitus like a uh, like those bugs or or you know crickets at night. <coughs> and I did have to take allergy medicine again because it is raining here again in Northeast Ohio. So please forgive me if I'm snorkely. So in the Hebrew Bible, there are nine different names for the insect or for a particular species or varieties. Let's remember the New Testament, the book of Revelation, would have been written in Greek. So keep that in mind, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in the English Bible, they are rendered sometimes locust, sometimes beetle, grasshopper, caterpillar, Palmer worm, which I don't know what that is, but we know the term worm. Again, you have this thing happening with first the bats when CV happened. And then you had all the talk about rats, <coughs> which is where plagues are known to come from because of fleas, allegedly. Please hold. I'm going to go get a drink. Ooh, sorry. Okay, so on that note, let's finish up with the etymology here. Now, the second way to use locust as a noun is a North American tree. I didn't know um, that there was a specific tree, but this gets interesting. Used for ornament and lumber. Uh, 1630s, a transferred use as based on resemblance from locust tree, carob tree the fruit of which supposedly resembles the insect. Um, the Greek for locust is acri, 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 often was applied in the Levant to caro, carob pods in the U.S. from late 19th century. Watch this. Policemen clubs were famous, famously made from locust wood. That's interesting because it says um, that the locust will come up from this pit. Well, hold hold on. We'll look it up real quick into Let's see if I can find it. Are you gonna let me do a search? You're not gonna let me do a search, are you? You'll just let me go there. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so I guess I'll just search it. We'll do that. Okay, so they come up with the fifth trumpet, the locust from the bottomless pit. I saw a star falling to, from heaven to earth. To him was given the key to the bottom, bottomless pit. And I'll show you where I'm going with all of this in a minute because it goes back to natural disasters, natural scientific occurrences um, that take place on the earth. So just, again, follow me because I do believe the Bible is a farming manual, it's astronomy, you know, it teaches us the cycles of the earth and the stars. So we are supposed to pay attention to things. Um, and again, the goal is to prove that it is a sign for a wicked generation so that maybe people will change their behavior and how they treat one another. And I'm not better than anyone else. That's not why I do this. Okay, so, and he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. Now, I showed you how there are these things in the ocean um, what, are, what were they called? The vents that released smoke in the water, underwater, okay? So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Now, that's where it doesn't fly. That's where you got to go back to land because 
unless the smoke is coming out of the sea, which I'm not sure how that would manifest. So again, you go back to land. Is it on land? And if it is on land, what is it? Okay. Out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Um, how do the scorpions have power? Well, they can kill you. If they bite you, they can kill you, right? So that, that's the power of death. And again, you're talking about um, all these things happening at the same time, right? Um, so like... Death is the the right the fourth the the four the four horsemen, the horsemen of death. Would also coincide with this as well, right? They were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. The torment was like torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. So like death, it can make you very sick. It can hurt. It can sting you. It can bite you, right? In those days, they'll seek death, but you you won't find it, right? You'll be miserable and you'll want to die but you won't be able to die, okay? So what are these things? Well, in, in one video I explored, it, could these locusts possibly be drones of some kind? Because um, watch, the shape of the locust was like horses. Well, what's like a horse, man? has to be something that's either quick, but it says shape, right? Four legs? I don't know. So you get into all kind of little things here. The shape was like horses prepared for battle, so obviously they're horses with some type of armor. On their heads were crowns, something like gold, not gold itself, but something like gold, some type of metal, some type of shiny thing. And their faces were like faces of men. And that's where I'm like, okay, men and women control drones. Could they be drones? Follow me here. I know, <laughs> again, we're exploring different possibilities. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. We're going to stop there. Oh, and breastplates of iron. We're going to stop there. Um, hair like women's hair. What is like women's hair? Well, women's hair is long, right? That's a quick differentiation is long, okay? Um, teeth like lion's teeth, meaning sharp, biting. Um, again, you get into that biting scenario, like consuming, right? And I was getting into this thought process because of locusts having so much to do with, like, um, cicadas. They, they look similar anyways. We're going to get into that word briefly. But again, remember that the clubs of basemen were also made of this. Now, you get into this is really weird, too. And this is how I got to this other place. So I don't know where I should segue here because, again... An old word, I guess, for locust was lobster, a large, long-tailed, stock-eyed, ten-legged marine shellfish. Early Middle English lobster, 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 from Old English lobster, lobster, also locust, a corruption of Latin locusta, locusta, marine shellfish lobster, also locust grasshopper, which is of unknown origin. Devan writes that the only word similar in form and meaning is lacerta, lizard, mackerel. So lizard, mackerel, again, you have all these like biblical references to things that are forbidden, right? Um, a lot of people will say lizards are reptilian and those of, of uh, that one specific satanic bloodline are reptilians. Now, when you say that in a poetic sense, what it means is that people are using their reptilian mindset. It is said that we have this instinctual part of our brain, and they call it a reptilian instinct in our brain, um, where there is no reasoning or logic as mankind has, it's more of a survival instinct, our base instinct, right? Um, so again, you get into this real symbolic language here. So I'm really trying to take you somewhere and, and we're trying to explore what does this mean? What did it mean then in their context when they used the word in their language, right? Um, but remember that. Just remember how you have all these references to the under the sea, on the land, animals, but they all have that one thing in common that there is that forbidden 
evil symbology, okay? Another thing is the change of Latin to English is unexplained. Perhaps it is by influence of old English, lape, labe, spider. And we just looked at the Hopi prophecy that spoke of in the end days, um, in the fourth age, age, the spider, when, when you see the spider weaving her web in the skies around the earth, then you will know the time is near. That is also something that could um, signify chemtrails, right? Or what we call chemtrails today. Now, again, we're, we're going through a lot here in a short amount of time. Some of this might hit some of you. Some of it might not. This is very symbolic language that, that we're talking about here. Um, so I thought that was interesting that another representation could be spider. Now we know that trilobites, um, are similar in shape to locusts and they have a shell, um, horseshoe crabs, which I had the strangest experience with one of those on a beach and my dad. And I told you all about that. It also from the French language, it could suggest something like crawfish or crayfish. Okay. But in Old French, both lobster and locust, Salter has God giving over the crops of Egypt to the langostes, as slang for a British soldier since 1640, originally in reference to the jointed armor of the roundhead cuirassiers. Now, if this is prophecy, that would be very insightful, right? If it is meaning a British soldier. So that's different. Again, I'm going through things. I'm not saying certain things. Sometimes what's not said is more important than what's actually said. I'm bringing you the information. It's up to you to make the connections. If you've not made them, that doesn't mean that I am crazy or that you are stupid. It just means that your brain does not learn or make the same connections in the same way that mine does. But somewhere out there, somebody will be helped by the things that I'm saying and they'll have that aha, that light bulb moment like you see in cartoons. And maybe it'll help them in their walk, in their reading, in their understanding of something somewhere. Um, and so here it gives an example of how it was used in reference to times of war and to a specific soldier. And then we get into Katie did praying mantis, honey locusts, um, septemdecimal. And, and I think those are the kind we're dealing with now, but I'm not. Of 17 years, originally used in reference to cicadas. So cicadas are septemdecimal locusts, guys. They like to change the words so that you could say, what do you mean? That shouldn't, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Why are you making that connection? You're you're crazy. Why are you looking at this? That doesn't make any sense. Wow, that's weird. You, you're saying that word isn't even in here? There we go. Thank you. Um, tree cricket. So they're saying it's more like a cricket. Perhaps a loan word from a Mediterranean subtrait language. People don't even know where it's come from. That's interesting. Uh, and then you go to Sakar. <laughs> Cigar, for some reason, is linked to a cicada. But then that's it. Because they played they played the um, switcheroo game on us again. It's not actually a cicada. It's a flippin' locust. So there, I think I proved that point. Um, so again, people saying, oh, that you're just... No, guys, it's not about that. It's about... Seeing things as they are and not walking through life as a sleepwalker or an NPC forever. Because when you know better, you do better. And I'm trying to do better these days. And I'm trying to help other people see that, that you know, God is still active in the world. And God is still talking to us. And God is still warning us. Okay, so hold please while I gather the info that I had found. Now then I went, wait. I got to show you this. I went, okay, I need to see if there's something in the sea. 
what can live in the sea by these underwater things? And this is one of the things that I found. Is a hairy crab. And I'm like, oh, they have hair. Like a man or a woman. Okay, let's check it out. Did they actually have hair? So let's look. This gets kind of gross, but yeah. It's a crab. Oh, wow. Mm. And it says it's a horrifying new new crab species. I didn't know this. Again, I went looking. And I said, okay. Well, the Bible says they have hair like men and women, but teeth like a lion. So let's see if these things have teeth and what they look like. Follow my thought process here. I know that's weird. Oh, my flipping goodness. They have people teeth. Do you see that? That's a people teeth. They have people teeth. Is anyone even here seeing this? Is that not wild? If you understand the relations that I'm making, please consider giving the video itself a thumbs up so I know. Um, monstrous. Now... Then I got off into this own little, when was this written? Because I've never heard of such a thing, never saw anything like this in my life. Oh, gee, July 18th. Isn't that ironic? It's right after July 17th. 2022. Um, okay. Now, I'm trying to see when. Hold on. Hold, please. We're going to get out of here. Get out of there. Get out of there. And go there. Okay. Uh, one of the ways the hairy shore crab can be distinguished from the European green crab is the number of marginal teeth on their carapace. So, again, I wanted to see what their teeth look like. If, if these things can live underwater. If the pit is possibly in the water. So, yeah, that's its own thing. <laughs> it got very weird. Um, but right now we're going to look at this just real quick. Here's the Greek and Hebrew definition um, for acris, which is locusts. Apparently the same as 206, a locust as pointed or as lighting on the top of vegetation. As lighting on the top of vegetation. I thought that was interesting. Okay, now it says, a locust, particularly that spe species, which especially infests oriental countries, stripping fields and trees. Numberless swarms of them almost every spring are carried by the wind from Arabia into Palestine and having devastated that country, migrate to regions farther north until they perish by falling into the sea. The Orientals accustomed to feed upon locusts, either raw or roasted and seasoned with salt or prepared in other ways, and the Israelites also were permitted to eat them. Part of speech, it's a feminine noun, um... And it's apparently the same as the definition from G206 in the lexicon in the Strong's. The word is used four times. In Matthew 3, 4, his meat was locusts and wild honey. Uh, John the Baptist, I believe. Mark 1, 6, loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Nebuchadnezzar, I think. Revelation 9, 3 as well. Um, out of the smoke, locusts upon the earth. And then Revelation 9, 7, the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. So that's different. That horse reference there is going to be its own like search. I'm going to have to look at. But you see how it's used now. So there's a little etym etymological study for you. Okay, so then I got to thinking about something else. And I wanted to know what was going on um, with the caldera. That's our very own, um, it's a volcano, it's a sleeping volcano. Calderas are sometimes more dangerous than volcanoes because they are underground. Now, if you remember, there's been a lot in the news the last several years. Um, NASA wanted to pump some type of fluid into it. First, they want to blow up the moon, and now they want to, but if, in case you forgot, um, I'll try to find it. NASA's bullet plan to save humanity from existential threat of Yellowstone erupting. That's interesting that it's just now hitting the UK because this was a couple of years ago now. Um, ice being super volcano may have been found on Pluto. There it is. 
BBC. Okay, so you see, again, everything that happened in 2017, we're getting this news again. So look, there's proof of it. NASA's ambitious plan to save Earth from a supervolcano. BBC, that's British news too. And then you get up here to Express UK. NASA's bold plan to save humanity from existential threat of Yellowstone one month ago. Everything that happened in 2017 is happening happening again. It's like it was a dry run for something. And, and again, I'm as I research, I am thinking out loud as well. Please feel free to chime in or offer your own tidbits of wisdom and or knowledge anytime. The comments are on. At least they should be. I turned them on at the beginning of the video. Um, so then I wanted to know this. So check this out. And this is why I stumbled onto the hairy crab, because it's, I started looking to see what kind of animals can live near a volcano that would then come out of the smoke of the pit, right? So that's where I'm going with this. It all started because of the alleged cicadas, which we now see, etymologically speaking, through an etymology study. Etymology is the study of the history of a word, if you don't know, um... Through an etymological study, we saw that the word locust came first, and that cicada is just another word for a specific type of locust, and they are the ones that apparently come out every 13 and 17 years or whatever it is. Hello, great light. Um, so we have bisons, wolves, bald eagles, bears, bighorn sheep, elk, moose, mountain goats. What is the rarest animal? Wolverine. But let's go here because I think, yes, I did pull something up already. Sit down, Samson. Sit down. Current trail access. Due to damage from the tunnel fire, the Lennox Crater Trail is closed. The A's Lava's Edge and Lava Flow Trails are open. Sunset Crater Volcano. Oh, so this is in Arizona. And again, it, it's funny, I've been monitoring earthquakes, and they say that Yellowstone allegedly has like something like 1,500 a year on a normal year. Um, that, like There hasn't been any updated information that I've been able to find in at least a year, and I'll show you that in a minute too. And again, it's good to be aware of what's going on in your environment. Um, I don't get to travel, so I have to rely on news, and then I have to rely on discernment. Um, and you guys, you know, for telling me, hey, I'm in this area. This is what I saw happening, especially if pictures can be sent. That's awesome all the time. And I will share those if you guys want to ever send anything in. Please do so. Okay. Um, so actually, life can get very, very abundant once a volcano erupts afterwards, several years afterwards, because what happens is there are great minerals put into the soil then, and you can have amazing crops even i read um for example if a volcano would go off during almost harvest season you could still get to those crops they would be safe only for about 30 days but you could still pull them out under from under that ash and they would actually have more nutrition in them instead of less now again you have to get them out from under that ash and all that stuff in a um, proper amount of time but a little, that's a little trivia for you. Um, so lava tubes and cracks in the lava flows are homes to insects, spiders, lizards, and rodents. So there's the spiders again. Bats inhabit some of these spaces flying out to feed at night. I also showed you in my book, The Fibonacci Tales, um, which in and of itself is its own rabbit hole, uh, written by E-L-B-E-L-B, -E -E um, who also wrote a book, I guess a hundred years ago that I found, I showed you that in a recent um, testimonial vlog. And so again, all this stuff right in my own area is like fed to me and it is strange. I, I do feel like I'm in a movie or something and I never consented to that. Um, but I think it's happening to, to more of us than are aware. And I mean that legitimately. I mean like uh, Truman Joe. Anyways, 
so we have bats that inhabit those places. And in the Fibonacci books, um, vampires are also in the caldera. That's where they're living. Now, again, if you want to think that these are actual humanoid beings that are spoken of in the Bible, could they mean vampires? Man, I don't know. But we're we're looking at everything and, and symbolically seeing how it translates. Um, so birds fly overhead. So you get stellar jays, pinion jays, black chin hummingbirds, white-breasted nuthatches, ravens, crows, hawks, and occasionally golden eagles. Um, the surrounding pine forests provide habitat for mule deer, elk, pronghorn i don't know what that is maybe we could look at it coyotes albert squirrels cottontails and porcupines so we know life can happen around these spaces right um most volcanoes that contain animals living within them are underwater volcanoes so if you're talking about animals that are actually living in the volcano itself um usually that only happens underwater some animals that have been recorded as living within an underwater volcano are the scalloped hammerhead shark, the silky shark, the six-gill stingray, hairy crabs with the human teeth apparently that I showed you, some types of lobsters, which are also referred to as locusts that I showed you um, in the etymology study earlier, and squid. And squid Squid is interesting because squid um, could also be the beast. Does squid have one eye or two? Hold, please. Just hold. Let me let me look at this because I gotta. I have to have the visual. My bad. Just spell it right. There we go. Fat thumbs. Okay, so could a squid be the beast or is it a kraken? Um. I mean, are they really that different? They're kind of gross, aren't they? Like, I just don't... I love the sea, but these... And I don't mean to offend whatever, but yeah. I wouldn't... I don't... Never ate calamari. I'm just not into some things, and this... I just don't. Yeah. Because some... And I'll be honest, some things are, are looking straight up like experimentations at this point. Um, and I can't lie about that. Like, that looks like two different animals put together. Something on its head there, which actually looks like the fin or the half part of another animal. I, I don't know. Like a mermaid fin on the top part, right? Maybe that is what people think is a mermaid sometimes. See? And then, what is that, right? Like, that's its hair and head. I don't know, man. Strange. Okay, so, then I did that. And underwater. And I just want you to see. This is what they look like. Legitimate underwater volcanoes. Okay. Now, when I was talking about the Mariana Trench, I said that could possibly be something that would translate to an underwater a pit where a polyon... Um, is he the one stuck or the one who has the key? I think he has the key. Now they say that that is over in Switzerland. That that is where um, the old Apollyon uh, temple was. Is over top of, well, used to be where the El CERN um, is now. And it used to be right on top of, I guess, where the LHC is now. Which is, we got to catch up on that because there's news about that as well. But that's going to be another video. So I wanted you to get an idea of this and kind of how to see what it looked like and get a visual. Underwater volcanoes. Wow. On where? The Antarctic Ocean floor. Didn't I kind of say that I thought hell, hell would be cold and if it was a place, it would be Antarctica? Or at least that would be Tartaria because they are separated from God eternally and that would be a cold, cold place, right? And I got another video and upload I'm going to do about the number 22. It's just going to be brief, but it's going to be about the NBA. So watch for that if you're interested. University of Tasmania. I just wanted to see if there were any things that were relevant regarding underwater volcanoes right now. 
Hidden Dangers of Underwater Volcanoes, 2023. So again, we saw news that was allegedly news in 2017. They're talking about it again in 2024. Are we on a loop as far as the news goes? Is the news run by AI? Is AI the beast that is running the internet? And let's look at that. For anyone who doesn't know, a lot of, oh wow, that looks like an LHC, but here they're saying that it's a submarine communication cable. Huh. So is what they're showing us just a cable of the LHC over there in CERN? I'm telling you guys, things aren't what they say they are, and you have to investigate everything. But yeah, a lot of our internet cables are in the ocean, for anyone that wasn't aware. So figure that one out, as far as satellites and all that go. Huh. Wow. You really think they did all this in 1995 or whatever? Humans by themselves? How the internet travels. Wow, that also looks like an LHC. Hmm. Huh. What is this place that we are living on? Oh my god, and it's everywhere, guys. How did that happen? You know, just for anyone who's not aware of these things. Anyone who says that, like, the, the internet, like, grid is, the grid's not going to go down unless it's a God-brought event. Because they don't want it to go down. They want you to keep eating. They want you to keep watching. They want you to keep consuming. Consume. They don't care how or what. Just consume. And don't ask questions. All right, so I hope I showed you how I think some of these things are interrelated, um, how cicadas could also be locusts, how the word wasn't even around. There, there wasn't even an etymology history for that word that we could study, um, that locust is the original word. And I do believe the pit is underwater, but how these things are going to come from underwater, um, I wouldn't know. So maybe I'm wrong about that. I Maybe it's a combination. I don't know, but I figured I'd bring that to you. I thought it got kind of weird. Education is artificial intelligence. Um, yeah, in a way, yeah. Artificial intelligence, I mean, what does that mean? Right? Like, break those words down. How is that even possible for intelligence to be artificial Again, the words, it's all games, right? The thing, what they tell us it means isn't really what it means. And that's how they cast their spells is just by us not knowing. You don't have to be afraid to speak or afraid of words. You just have to understand what they actually mean, which requires doing actual study like etymology. Most people just want to parrot other people on the Internet and they don't want to bring fresh concepts. I mean, we've been talking about real eyes, real eyes you know, for years, people have been talking about Mason bad, you know, this good, like it's been on YouTube for years. There is nothing new that that this, this generation can tell us about those things. We need to do the work, you know, and we want someone else to do the work for us all the time. It requires actual study and, and understanding how the world is built and, and what's going on there. And if water is a conductor for electricity, how can a person even electrocute themselves? I mean, I know there are, you know, you ground the wires and there's rubber and insulators and all these things. I get it. But it's under the ocean. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's all just like it all goes. It, it's all self-contradictory, right? Which means everything cancels itself self out. And again, I wonder about our history because I have a history book here or a little kid's book talking about Leif Erikson discovering America. I don't think Amer it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible because that's not what it was called. 
It wasn't called America then. I think it was called Israel then. A Norse explorer who was thought to have been the first European to set foot on continental America approximately half a millennium before Christopher Columbus. And nobody even talks about him. Why? Because he's Norse and he, he was probably a little bit gigantic. Wow, they're showing him with a cross there, though. So is that Odin or Christ around his neck? And I'm, again, I'm just asking because I don't know. Right? So it's time to study. We need to study. I can't see what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'll have to go back and see what it... In the minds of the publicans is AI. Minds, minds. I get it. Um, But there are also bigger humans, bigger people who were saints. St. Christopher was allegedly a bigger person, what we would call a giant today. So again, um, you can't just look always and say good, bad, bad, good, although I try to symbolically show you things. The rest of the journey and the discernment and the growth is on you guys and putting these pieces together. But again, I, I believe that God has been showing me these things for years and I've been trying to bring it and now I'm just tired because I it's um well I think it's just time for something different at this point a new phase to to start speaking of which we're going to get into the Norse kingdom I was going to do that video today and realized I wanted to do the locust study live with you guys so you could check out kind of how I do my work and and you could check out what I found with the the hairy crab, if nothing else, that's a strange animal. But we're going to get into some of the Norse stuff because I believe those are Nephilim stuff. Knowledge is the Cinderella story. Knowledge itself isn't what's evil, right? It's not knowledge that's evil. There comes a certain point where faith is belief without sight. So faith is kind of where your knowledge stops, faith begins, right? And if you stop with knowledge... You're missing a whole other side of the same coin, which um, feeds you in a different way. So, anyways, that's a good note to stop this on. Um, hold me to what I said at the end of this video so I remember what I was going to do videos on. But I want to end this so it's user-friendly uh, for anyone that wants to check it out. The tree of knowledge of good and evil we should not eat. No, we shouldn't have ate it then. Right. So do you not read it all? You're, you're here now on the internet. You're, you're utilizing the tree of knowledge now. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We weren't supposed to know what evil was. Right? But again, I believe it was all part of the plan originally. Because without eating it and without being disobedient, we would have never ignited our free will. Okay? There is a point to all of this. It's not pointless. But please don't try to stop others in their journey. And if you come here to play word games, this is the wrong channel pl to play word games on because I, <laughs> I don't play that. You guys have a blessed day. I love you.